Today's scripture lesson is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. This is in the New Testament portion of the Bible. Before we heard, hear the word of the Lord, let us pray. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The gifts he gave us were, were that some would be po apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of God of Christ we must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine by people's trickery by their craftiness and deceitful scheming but speaking the truth in love you must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. We have heard the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So there are probably 12 sermons in that passage. I will only preach one today. And it is something that I'm very, very passionate about, and that is the church especially when the church is mature, when the church grows and becomes who it is supposed to be. It is a great time, and great things happen when a church becomes mature, becomes more of who they are, is built up and equipped to carry out the mission of Christ in their community. Powerful things happen when the church family has within it young people, Older people who grow in their knowledge and their sense of connection to one another, their sense of connection to Christ, and their sense of connection that they, each one of us, are a part of the mission of Christ in our neighborhood. Paul uses the metaphor of a body, that each person in the church family is joined together one way or the other, and that in our connections we have the ability to promote the growth of someone else. And it is actually this. There's no secret sauce except this part of the secret sauce. By simply stepping in, stepping up, and stepping into who you were created to be. In other words, you can lead to the maturity and the growth, the personal growth, growth of another person by being yourself or part of your better self. Okay, I thought I would hear like a, good. I don't have to pretend to be somebody I'm not. No, you don't. Be yourself. You hear me talk about sometimes if you want to find a way to serve your community or your God, that you would just use your GPS. And obviously, I'm not talking about your phone. So someone remind me, what GPS is. Gifts, passions, skills. Usually, one of those three things, or a, kind of a, a matrix of those, will help you find out how you can serve other people. Your gifts, what you were talented at, your passions, something that some of us develop passions along the way, and your skills skills you develop. And this is a very fitting passage for us to consider when we're talking about people joining consistory. Now, I want to talk about the church, but I don't, I don't know if you've spent considerable time thinking about how strange the church is. Have you? All right. I don't mean this in a negative way. Imagine this. 
Each of you had a first visit to this church. Yes? Do you remember your first visit? Okay. Imagine what could have gone wrong. Here's the thing. You had a first visit, right? You came back. Okay. You came back. Number three, you stayed. And not just you, but other people. Other people in our community here came, had a first visit, came back, visited, and then stayed. Now, some of you don't remember your first visit because you were born into this church and you were baptized in the water in that font. So for you, this, there's never been a part of your life where this community of faith has never existed. That's powerful. And some of you came here uh, looking for a church home. And you found it. My first visit was approximately four years, nine months ago. I came back. <laughs> August was 10 weeks old, roughly, at that time. He'll be five in November. So I had a first visit. You had a first visit. We stayed. <laughs> You came back. And so what we do when we vote in a congregational meeting for elders and deacons is we're bearing witness to this testimony that God has taken strangers and neighbors and friends and family members and has brought them into a congregation where the people who have been there way longer have said, I got here before you, but I see some gifts, passions, and skills within you that can make our church stronger. So may the Lord bless you as you help lead us forward. That's what's happening in a congregational meeting. So what we're doing uh, in the installation and the ordination, which is what we'll do next month, we're saying God has chosen you for a period of time to lead us forward. So we're bearing witness that God takes strangers and neighbors and friends that have different religious backgrounds, different social backgrounds, uh, different ethnic backgrounds, and are forming all of these people into a new community that we call the church. And this is actually one of the reasons, one of the ways that the church, a church, and hopefully our church, makes a neighborhood stronger. As you take neighbors who live a few blocks away but really didn't know one another, and you put them in the same room on Sunday morning, and they get to know one another. And then somebody who lives a few miles away comes into the mix with a very different background, but we learn that we all have differences, and that diversity of opinion and skin color and language and accent and all the other differences we have are both natural and God-given. This is one of the ways that a church helps a neighborhood. I hope that you see that. And so we're stronger, not because we believe the same thing. Can I say that? It's on the teleprompter right here, so I have to say it. But we're not stronger because we all think the same thing, because do we think the same thing? No. No. We may believe similarly on a lot of things. But we rarely, if ever, are in 100% agreement. I mean, do you, are you in the same place today as you were two years ago? No. So notice that Paul doesn't talk about the unanimity of the church. He talks about the unity of the church. Ah, so that's very different, right? So I have a religious background. Uh, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. But as a teenager, I became a Christian. And kind of the thrust of that flavor of Christianity was to make sure that everyone fit in a nice box, a theological box. But theology and life in general, and especially God, does not exist in a box, even if that box has a steeple on top. Right? So we're talking about unity. We're talking about differences and accepting that and working through it, which is another way that a church like ours can make a neighborhood and a city stronger. Okay. 
The New Testament was written in Greek, and the word for church is ekklesia. Okay? The word ekklesia means called out. Called out. Okay? So, you are called out, so that means that the gospel was presented to, to you, met you where you were. So, called you out, and then called you in, then called us together. And then as we are equipped and we grow in our faith, we are then called together, and then we're then sent forth. So if you wanted to wrap up like a theology of church, that would be it. That you have to be faithful in the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus, the administration of the sacraments, because those things work God's grace into us and form us into this new community. And then as we see, oh, you know what? Missions is not something that happens overseas, but missions is what happens, what happens when I step out my front door. Then you see that we're all sent through the week, to be who God created us to be. Now, if you look at verse 12, you will notice Christ gives a lot of gifts there and for a purpose. And what is that purpose? Well, there's no numbers there. Oh, I see. That's the problem. To equip the saints for the work of ministry. So, what's my job? My job is to equip somebody for ministry. Now, who does the work of the ministry? The ministry? Uh, the minister? Well, my job in all of this is to equip you to do the work of ministry. All right, because it's to equip the saints for ministry. So when someone joins consistory, they are not saying, I will do all the work. What they're doing is saying, I'm going to find out how I can get other people involved in the work of the ministry. Because the ministry, even the word liturgy means the service of the people. It's not the minister worshiping, it's everybody worshiping. And so my job, one of my jobs, is to equip you, to equip elders and deacons for the work ahead of us. We're called out and we're called together and we are called forth. And that means this is that the work of the ministry is both the work that we do together, but it's the way that you live your life during the week. So whether you're in finance or education, the service industry, healthcare, nonprofit work, being a student, being a neighbor, being a volunteer, being someone who wants to make their neighborhood stronger. All of that to say, is that the kingdom of God extends much further than these arches. And I think that you know that. So while it is important that we have a group ministry like the long closet and some other things that we do throughout the year, I think it's more important that we all personally understand that we need to take up our space in this world for the good of others. Maybe you would agree with that. So sometimes we diminish, and we say that the minister or the missionaries or somebody, like those are the people who are doing the work of God. No, no, no. If you've ever been on your back in a hospital bed, I think you will see a sliver of other people who are doing the work of God. Or if you know somebody who is a great social worker or counselor or a teacher who can connect with their students, you'll see a sliver of what it means to do the work of the kingdom of God which is to build a human family that is connected, connected to one another with a sense of decency and pride and wants to uplift and make people stronger. Friends, you have a gifting, okay? So I'm gonna say that again, and I want you to say amen, maybe not for yourself, but to affirm it to other people in this room, okay? Friends, you have a gifting. You do. Everybody in this space right now has a gifting. As the psalmist says, you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. And you are made for good in this world. And you have a gift to give. And I know that this is a very weird time that we're living in. And the way that we can serve is a bit different. But I think this is the perfect time for us to think about how we can serve. How we can serve and live our life in better ways. 
So I want to talk to you about next steps. And this is probably just within the confines of the church family. I've had, I have several conversations right, right now with people who are interested in joining the church. So that's going to happen. So if you are interested, you can mark it on that sheet of paper, and I can contact you. And we can talk about membership to this church. It doesn't work like Costco or one of those places, okay? You don't get like a bulk discount on your tithes and offerings. Um, but it is an important in membership to say, this is my tribe. This is my people. That's what's happening in membership. Uh, if you haven't been baptized before, you could be baptized. As we're organizing ourselves for ministry the rest of this year in 2021, you're going to see some things printed uh, for committee work, um, which is how we carry out our ministry. Maybe you're going to say, I think I can do some of that. And maybe you need to consider what it would mean to be a part of consistory eventually. You can help the church become better, stronger, and closer by stepping into who you are created to be by God. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit should be praised and thanks for the diversity of people and the diversity of gifts, passions, and skills among us. So it is in the diversity of gifts that we meet one another's needs. So we serve, and in other times, we are able to be served capably by those who are gifted by the Spirit. So friends, as I close, be of great courage. Do not be discouraged. You have a place in the work of Christ, and you have a place in this church family. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of this gospel.